In Canada, when a woman applies for a federal job, being a woman is considered equal to having a disability. Now, you're probably thinking, what am I talking about? That has to be a clickbait title. And it might be a little bit of a clickbait title, but let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the Employment Equity Law in Canada. And this is the law for federal positions of work. So if you work for the federal government. And what it says is that there are four groups of people, four designated groups of people, that if they apply for a job, they must be preferred. They must be the first people hired. Here's what it says. Employment equity, as defined in federal Canadian law by the Employment Equity Act, requires federal jurisdiction employers to engage in proactive employment practices to increase the representation of four designated groups, women, people with disabilities, Aboriginal peoples, and visible minorities. Now, note how it says increase representation, which means hiring more. And notice that women are in the same category as people with disabilities. It continues, the act states that employment equity means more than treating persons the same way, but also requires special measures and the accommodation of differences. So it spells out, this is not about treating people equally. This is about giving those four groups special advantages. Now, I can understand when it says to accommodate differences for someone who's disabled. That makes sense. But this is basically saying, if a woman and a man apply for the same federal job, the woman must be given the job over a man. And the title is basically making this point. In order for a man to be considered equal as an applicant to a woman, he has to be disabled, which means a woman is legally considered the same as a disabled man. So again, the four groups, women, people with disabilities, Aboriginal people, and visible minorities. So women are in the same category as people with disabilities. So this is about helping people who are disadvantaged in the workforce. So the implication here is that women would be disadvantaged in the workforce. Maybe they have higher unemployment, maybe they're underrepresented, but what do the stats actually say? Well, as it turns out, um, men are actually the ones who are behind in the workforce. Uh, this is the unemployment rate in Canada as of July 2020. I've highlighted the top uh, line, which is the overall unemployment rate. Uh, for men, it's 11.3%. For women, it's 10.4%, which is pretty close. But it shows that men are actually more likely to be unemployed. And if you go down, you'll see this is true for every single age group. But even to that point... I find the numbers for men's and women's unemployment being roughly equal to be somewhat questionable because I did a video a few months ago about how the unemployment rate in Alberta for young men is almost 20%, which is double the unemployment rate for young women in Alberta. And it was a crisis of why young male unemployment is so much higher. Uh, I put a link to that video along with every article and screenshot you see in this video down in the description below. Now, someone might ask, but what about in the federal employment? Uh, are women underrepresented there? Turns out, no. Um, as shown in figure two, in 2018, women made up 55.3% of the federal public service, a 3.3% increase from 2000. Now, you'll see in that little graph below, Men have been underrepresented in the federal force for 20 years now. So it's not like women have been behind all this time. It does say in that one line, it's a considerable increase, 32.2% from 1990. That may be true, but 1990, now we're talking 30 years ago. So if a woman without disabilities applies, she's considered equal to a man with disabilities, even though women are not underrepresented in either the public or the federal workforce. Is that really fair? Is that really equal? And does that really make sense?